Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well. Peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Back again with another lesson through the Spirit, through the power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, this lesson, you know, is edifying. And to those of you that are sincere believers that believe with your whole heart, mind, body, and soul, and Yahweh Bashim Yahvashah, you Akim if you Akwathim, and may Yahweh Bashim Yahvashah deliver and save you and have mercy upon you and your households all right, within these last days, all right, which is full of uh, you know, perilous times, all right, as we wait await these last or final prophecies to happen in the planet Earth. All right, such as the mark of the beast, all right, the implementation of the mark of the beast worldwide, which will be the RFID chip and the brain implant. You know, and Esau coming in all right, with fury and wrath against us. All right. Yahweh Shai is on the way. And as we were delivered out of Egypt, all right, we're going to be delivered out of America. Matter of fact, hey, the scripture says this. When you go into the book of Jeremiah, which this is uh, one of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, and beginning at uh, the seventh verse, therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land because some person may try to get slick and say okay well look that was speaking about the children of Israel being led from the north country which is Babylon and you know this was a future prophecy concerning these times now and our people being led out of North America, as well as all the places that they were scattered into. You know, the scripture speaks about, you know, um, Babylon being destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah, which uh, ancient Babylon or the land that was called Babylon, which is Iraq, was not destroyed after the same manner of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because Sodom and Gomorrah still smokes into this day. All right, that smoke going up as an end sample for the nations that will come after Sodom and Gomorrah that will live after the same likelihood that will imitate Sodom and Gomorrah. And what nation upon the planet Earth is imitating Sodom and Gomorrah? That's this place, which is known as America, which another name for America is Babylon, the great whore. So this place will be destroyed after the similitude of Sodom and Gomorrah. This place spiritually being known prophetic through prophetic scriptures as Babylon, because this place is issuing out confusion. And this place is going to be set on fire. It's going to be hit with the last and final plague of Yahweh by Shemiahwashai. And when that happens, all right, Yahweh Shai is going to send forth his angels and they're going to gather the elect from the four corners of the earth before that destruction can come upon them and consume them. And that's Matthew's the 24th chapter and beginning at the 29th verse immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is speaking about the thermonuclear apocalypse, thermonuclear destruction. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels 
with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So when Yahweh Shai comes, that's when Jeremiah, the 23rd uh, chapter, and beginning at the seventh verse, is going to be fulfilled. And that's when all of the nation of Israel, that, that's part of the elect, all of the elect of the nation of Israel, I should say it that way, will be gathered from the four corners of the earth. They will be gathered out of all of the countries that they were scattered into. And they will be saved from the last and final plague to come upon humanity. All right, to come upon America, which is spiritually known as Babylon, to come upon, you know, different parts of Europe, to come upon the land of Israel. Because those are the main three places that are going to be destroyed. I'm sure nukes would hit other places as well. But those, but those three places will be hit the most. And especially America. America will be completely destroyed. To the point where you're looking out of a chariot. Those that did get the victory. Those that did you know, endure to the end and were saved that were is Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are part of the elect. They're going to look down upon the destruction of America. All right, because this land is going to be completely destroyed. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that says, uh, the whole land shall be destroyed. Isaiah, the 13th chapter, verse 5, it says they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even Yahweh and in the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So the weapons of his indignation are these missiles that he put in the mind of these nations to create these top officials of these nations and their scientists to put together and create for the day of the Lord. For the great day of the Lord For his wrath and his judgment And his vengeance And they're going to destroy America uh, Which is spiritually known as Babylon Jeremiah 51 to 47 Therefore behold the days come That I would, will, will do judgment Upon the graven images of Babylon And her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. So that's something that's going to come upon the whole land. So therefore, if you're in the chariot and you're looking down upon this place, the whole land being consumed with fire, it will look like a lake of fire. It will look like a sea of fire. Revelation 15 and 1, and I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. All right, his indignation. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass with fire, and there, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of Yahweh. And the way that we would get the victory is through our faith, through our faith in Yahweh Shai, and through keeping the commandment of Yahweh unto the end. No matter the fear, no matter the consequences for resisting Esau, Edom, and his system. All right, re re rebuking all right, the mark of the beast and not receiving it, and even willing to go unto death. For that belief in Yahweh by Shemiah Washai that you have. All right, by resisting, all right, and, and maintaining integrity and having faith, this is how you're going to overcome. Even if you have to go to death to show your faith in Yahweh by Shemiah Washai, you will be raised back up and you will be in the chariot as well. 
and, st and standing upon the sea of glass, all right, looking through the windows of the chariot, through the firmament upon America as it cooks, and singing the song of Moses. And this is how you know that Esau Edom is still around because not only did that, that song apply to ancient Egypt when Yahweh by Shemel Shai confounded it and destroyed it because of the things that they did unto his people, which he's going to do in like manner unto this place. As you go to the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, Uh, in verse 13, now this is speaking exclusively about ancient Egypt. It says, and he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. So this is speaking exclusively. It's speaking about ancient Egypt. And our people serving in Egypt for 400 years. We were there for 430 years. The 30 years coming from Joseph. All right, beginning with him. But after Joseph died, a new Pharaoh rose up. All right, that knew not Joseph and all of the things that he did to help save Egypt. And they began to afflict the children of Israel. So we were afflicted there for 400 years. And also that nation shall, whom they shall serve will I judge afterward. Shall they come out with great substance. So Egypt was destroyed. It was confounded by Yahweh by Shemel Shai. He brought 10 plagues upon it. All right. And he plagued that place and he delivered his people. Well, when the time is right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to do the same thing unto this country because of what they have done unto his chosen people. So he will judge them. All right. And he's going to cause us to come out of them. Yahweh Ratazah will be a part of the elect. And when we come out, we're going to sing the same song that Moses sung. And the children of Israel, when Yahweh by Shemi Awashai gave them the victory over Egypt. And, and who's can uh who's who does this song include or who's included in the song? Well, when you go into the book of Exodus, it mentions it mentions in the uh, Exodus the 15th chapter about Esau Edom. Because ultimately by Yahweh by Shemi Abishai taking down Babylon, all right, this place which is spiritually known as Babylon, he's going to confound these other nations as well. When Yahweh Shai comes, it will be a fulfillment of what is written in the book of Daniel, the second chapter, when the stone smote the feet of the image and it broke the whole image into pieces. To the point where there was nothing to be perceived of it but dust. Because all of these nations are going to be taken down. So the fact that we're going to sing this song just proves that Esau Edom is here today. The scripture says within the book of 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, and beginning at the 8th verse. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, whom Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. And the reason that the hand of Jacob held the heel of Esau, because that represents Jacob pulling Esau out of rulership. And who came out of Jacob? Yahweh Shai, whom it was promised that will rule the earth, and unto him was given dominions. All right, and power over the over, over the nations to rule over them with the rod of iron. So him coming out of Jacob, he's going to be the one that pulled Esau Edom down out of power. Because it was promised that Esau Edom will live by the sword and by the sword, he shall gather the whole earth and the fatness of the earth. 
And that happened beginning, you know, um, with the Greeks and then the Roman Empire. And now you have the Roman Empire back in power now. And they've conquered the whole world. And how did they do it? They did it by the sword. So reading on, it says in Esau of Salakia, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the end of the world, which means the end of this time. The word world there being uh, Ion or Eon, however you would like to pronounce it. So Esau is still around. And he's a part of the song of Moses that we're going to sing when Yahweh by Shemiah Washai delivers us this time through this Exodus out of America. Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh and spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have he drowned into the sea. Yahweh is, is my strength and song and is become my salvation. He is my power. I will prepare him in habitation, my father's power, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war and Yahweh is his name. And that's what he's coming back to do. Him and his son, Yahweh Shai, they're coming back to make war, to wage war. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts have he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the sea. Which you have Edomites, they don't believe in the scriptures. And it tells you in uh, Psalms 10 and 4 that they will not fear Yahweh and he is not in all their thoughts. So when we speak these, these words, you know, they, they go back and they, since they don't believe, they have to find proof of it. So they go and they, you know, do their their uh, archaeological work you know they do their excavations they dig and they find out that these things are actually there you know some things they try to cover up you know but some things they can't so they find out that that uh there's archaeological proof and signs of the things and great events that happen in the bible that are true such as uh, Noah's Ark you know such as uh, you know uh, excavations that were done in Egypt you know that prove the, the presence of Israelites being in Egypt you know they uh, dive into the, the Gulf of Suez and, and found wheels you know from chariots you know, uh, of the Egyptians that have been there. You know, some have corroded, but some are still visible. You know, that proves, you know, a Red Sea crossing. So these are actual events that took place, which shows you that Yahweh exists. Now, what Yahweh have done unto Esau, Edom, that's ruling over now, he have hardened their hearts after the similitude of Pharaoh so that he can get himself a great name when he delivers the elect out of the nation of, of Babylon, out of the nation of America. Reading on, it says, the deaths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone the right hand of Yahweh has become glorious in power. The right, thy right hand, O Yahweh, have dashed in pieces the armies. Now, who is the right hand of Yahweh? It tells you within the scriptures. It's like you bear with me, Baba Kasha. In uh, Isaiah 53 and 1, it says, Who have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? 
And that scripture was fulfilled in Yahawashai in John 12 and 38. That saying, that saying of, of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of Yahweh been revealed? In which um, this was speaking of Yahweh Shai, and how he will come and he will perform many miracles. And although he performed these miracles, you had the Israelites that were not believing on him. So he's the right arm. Of Yahweh. All right, he's the right arm of Yahweh. So he was back then doing these things unto Egypt and bringing these great calamities upon that place. So Yahweh Shai was back then, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sendest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble, and with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together, the floods stood up as in a heap, and the depths were congealed in the in the heart of the sea. And when you the word congealed means to thicken. Like if you're uh, curdling cheese, you know, or butter, and it becomes thick. So the waters stood up on each side split down the middle for the children of Israel to pass through the enemy said I will pursue I will overtake I will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them I will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them then thou didst blow with the wind and the sea covered them they sink as a lead in the mighty water. And the scripture said that Yahweh knocked off of the um the wheels off the chariot. So the chariots were heavy. They dragged. Who is like unto Yahweh? Oh uh, Yahweh among the gods. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, uh, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Because there is no other God besides Yahweh. Matter of fact, when you go to Isaiah, the 44th chapter, in the 6th verse, it says, Thus saith Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, uh, it, it says, in, in his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, I am the first. I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. So besides him, there, there is no God. So so really, who would you liken him unto? Who, who would you compare him to? Would you compare him to gold, silver, a, a, a graven image? The gods of the heathens are not gods. Isaiah 40 and 18, to whom will ye liken Yahweh, or what likeness will you compare unto him? Verse 25, to whom then will you liken me, or sh shall I be equal, except Yahweh, except the Holy One? And that's the reason why when Yahweh finally delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, he spoke with them from heaven. You know, and they became all afraid. And they said, well, you know, Moses, you speak with us. Don't let Yahweh speak with us. And the reason that he did that was to prove them so that they would know that the similitude of our power was not to be made, you know, out of gold and silver, you know, or any uh, 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 in the likeness of anything in the heavens or anything in the earth or anything in the sea. That he was the actual power. And he's a he's a man. He's an actual man. All right, that sits upon the the throne of heaven. All right, a dark skinned man with the with the woolly beard. James the seventh chapter. And the ninth verse, and I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of day, d days did sit, whose garments was uh, whose garment was white as snow, in the hair of his head like pure wool 
His throne was like the fiery flame and his wills as a burning fire. And what people upon the planet Earth has woolly hair, so-called Negroes. So the most high humbly father will resemble a Negro. So there's no other God besides him and there's nothing that you can compare unto him. All right, he's the he's the, the, the God of gods. Isaiah, the 45th chapter in the 14th verse. It says, Thus said Yahweh, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians, men of stature shall come over unto thee and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains they shall come over and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplications unto thee, saying, Surely Yahweh is, uh, is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. So all of the nations are going to eventually know that there is no God but our power, Yahweh. All right? Yahweh is the power of heaven and earth and all things that are therein. They're going to know. These heathens are going to know that there is no other power that the only power of heaven and earth is Yahweh alright and his son Yahweh Shai sits on his right hand they're going to know this alright especially when he does his great works reading on it says verily thou art Yahweh that hidest thyself O power of Israel the savior because for this, this this duration of time, Yahweh hasn't really re revealed his hand. All right, he hasn't did anything in the earth, you know, on the on the level of, of 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 his great judgment that he can do and will do. Something like what he did in Egypt, but he's getting ready to do that when he brings down this place, and that's the reason why they're gonna say, "Surely thou art a God that hidest thyself." Because now the arm of Yahweh is getting ready to be revealed again. And when it is, these nations and their gods are going to be famished. And they're going to say, surely there is no other God but thee. There is no God, you know, besides thee. Verse 16, they shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them, they shall go to confusion together. That, that are makers of idols. It is a scripture in Zephaniah 2 and 11. It says, Yahweh will be terrible and that he will famish the, God of the he gods of the heathens. Because these nations in the kingdom of heaven after Yahweh reveals himself and do all of these great and terrible judgments in the earth, they're not going to worship their gods anymore because they're going to know who the true God is and that he's a terrible power. And, then, and if they do not serve and obey him, then judgments will come upon them. All right. He made his name known in the earth before and well known when he delivered the children out of out of Israel. I mean, uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he's going to make his name well known in the earth again when he brings down Esau, Edom, and he delivers the children of Israel out of America and out of all of the places where they be scattered throughout all countries. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with the everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. For thus have Yahweh the create, that, that created heavens, Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it and created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh and there is none else. Because when this thermonuclear destruction happened, the whole, whole planet Earth isn't going to explode. Different places of the Earth is going to be destroyed more than others. America more than any other country because it's going to be destroyed completely. But this Earth is going to abide forever for the children of Israel to rule in it and to rule over it. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. 
I am Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, because Allah can't save you. Jesus Christ can't save you. Buddha can't save you. The only one that can save you as the nation of Israel is Yahweh through the belief upon his son Yahweh Shai. You have to first believe upon his son Yahweh Shai. Tell ye and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together who have declared this from the ancient time, who have told it from the time that time. Have not I Yahweh? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a savior. There is none beside me. So Yahweh is saying, there ain't no other God. Ain't no other God beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am, I am power. I am the power. And there is none else. I have sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness. And shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall swear. And when is this going to happen? It's going to happen when he sends his son back again the second time. And he performs his great judgments in the earth. Back in Exodus, thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou and thy mercy have led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold of the inhabitants of Palestina. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed, and the mighty men of Moab tremble. Trembling shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over, over your Howard, till thy people pass over, which thou hast purchased. So there's a scripture that says that there is no end of the nations. Salakia. And I believe that's the book of Ecclesiasticus. Uh, 4 and 16. There is no end of all people, even all that have been before them. They also that come after them shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is, this is also is vanity and vexation of spirit. So the children of Edom is still around. And we're about to get the victory over Esau Edom and over the mark of the beast system that he has set up and over his mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip and the brain implant. And Yahweh Bashmi Awashai is going to judge them. He's going to judge all of these other nations and he's going to reveal himself in the earth. And then he's going to be known to these nations through his mighty works, through his great judgments. The book of Psalms, the 86th chapter, and beginning at the 8th verse. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Yahweh, neither are there any works like unto thy works. And when you look up the word works, the word there is ma'isha in the Hebrew tongue. And it says deeds, works. Of deliverance and judgment. So Yahweh by Shai is getting ready to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel. And with that same deliverance that he delivered the, the um the children of Israel, all right, that same deliverance is gonna be a judgment upon these other nations. For an example, when Yahweh by Shai brought the ten plagues upon Egypt alright those 10 plagues was judgment unto the children of Egypt 
but it was deliverance unto the children of Israel because Yahweh knows how to do that. He knows how to, to, to deliver the godly man out of temptation, but to reserve the wicked until the day of destruction and wrath. I want to uh, see if I can grab find the scripture real fast in the uh, book of wisdom of Solomon. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. This is Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh, uh, the seventeenth chapter, eighteenth chapter, and the seventh verse. It says, "So of thy people was acceptive, both the salvation of the righteous and the destruction of the enemies, for wherewith thou didst punish our adversaries by the same thou didst glorify us, whom thou hast called." So the same thing will apply now. All right, with all of the great judgments that are coming into the earth, all right, Yahweh by Shemel Vashai will deliver the elect, but will judge the wicked. And by these things, Yahweh is going to be made known. He's going to be made manifest. His son, Yahweh Shai, is going to be made known. He's going to be made manifest. And it's going to also be manifest who his people is and whom he loved and whom he chose. And from all of these great things that are going to happen in the earth, Psalms 86 and 9, all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Yahweh, and shall glorify thy name. Because Yahweh by Shem Shai, the time is coming where he's going to be known by his judgments again in the earth as he was before. Psalm 66 and beginning at one to the chief musician, a song of, or, or psalm, make a joyful noise unto Yahweh, all ye, all ye lands, sing forth honor unto of his name and make his praises glorious. Say to, unto Yahweh, how terrible art thou in thy works and through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Salah. Come and see the works of Yahweh. He is terrible in his doing towards the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land and went through the, uh, the flood on foot and did, um, and they went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. And that's what has happened now. The rebellious has exalted themselves. So what is Yahweh getting ready to do again? He's getting ready to be terrible again. And through his great power and through his terribleness, will he judge this world? And as he confounded the gods of Egypt, because of uh, those 10 plagues that came, Exodus 12 and 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. Well, all of the gods that these heathens worship in the earth, and they're worshiping America as a god, they're worshiping the image of the beast. He's going to smite this place and he's going to confound all of the gods that the heathens and our people do worship. By way of bringing these great judgments in the earth. And when he brings these judgments in the earth, by way of those same judgments, will he deliver the elect. And all of these other nations are going to know that Yahweh is the true power. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying until the next time. Shalom.